says it's a deeply uncomfortable time for the Tory faithful. There will be deep unease at what has happened, and they will be expressing that, and they will be told. Well, good morning, and welcome back to another vlog. Um, I've come to North Yorkshire, um, and for once I actually really studied um, the weather forecast to see where I wanted to go. And on the, um, actually on the BBC weather um, website, they've got a really good sort of interactive map, and you can see fog and mist. And as you can see, that's the reason I've come out this morning. So I've come to somewhere I've come before where there is a lone tree um, that I shot with the drone. I was on the other side of this valley um, when I came here last time, so I've walked around and I think it's just down this path. Um, it's a nice isolated shape, uh, nice isolated tree, nice shape, and it's got quite nice splayed branches. Um, that's my plan, that's as far as my plan goes, but the idea is isolating um, the subject by removing the background, just like this fog is doing with me now as I'm talking to you, so yeah. Um, it's quarter to eight, sunrise is in about half an hour, but I don't think that's going to make much difference apart from making it lighter. Um, I mean there are some bits of soft light already coming through, um, but it's very subtle, I don't think it's going to make much difference, so probably thinking black and white, moody shots. Um, but I'd love to get something really, really simplistic and minimal with just a subject and just almost white um, around it. So. Yeah, I'm going to carry on down this path um, and let's see what we can find. I have become, um, I'd say, distracted by something else. My eye has been drawn to something as I've been walking through. Um, because of the temperature, there's this beautiful mist, but also there's this really lovely, light, delicate frost on the ground um, that's just clinging to um, some of the... Um, heather and the, what I can only describe as sort of like the grasses, but um, I've got a composition, something that stood out to me, so I'm just going to take you down to the camera because we're nice and low and just explain to you what I'm taking a picture of. Okay, so what we're shooting is this lovely, delicate little flower. I'm sorry, I uh, sometimes just can't resist getting into an Aussie accent. Um, yeah, let me just get that in focus so you can see what I'm actually taking a picture of. Ooh. There we go. Um, yeah, so as I say, I, I don't know actually what these are, um, some kind of sort of grass or something. Um, but as you can see, if I just pan around, it's actually everywhere. Um, and the difficulty is, you know, choosing which one you want to take a picture of. And I have the utmost respect um, for people like Simon Booth that do lots of uh, macro woodland photography and spend hours getting a composition perfect and working out the right thing to take a picture of. So I was looking at this sort of group and then this... Um, this one here um, just stood out facing the camera just because it gives a nice perspective. Um, so I've got that placed right in the middle. So on my settings, um, I know it's boring, but I was because it, it, it's relevant to this. My aperture, I've had to go really wide open. Um, I do like the effect that gives because it blurs out all of the background. Um, but it's because I'm trying to get my shutter speed as fast as possible without having to touch my ISA. But I've still had to go up to 1250. Um, the annoying thing is it, there's a slight breeze, so it's moving. Um, if I was, well, I don't know if Simon Booth would have any tips for this, but it's obviously very difficult to focus stack it, which I would need to do, because if I just zoom in, you'll notice that the middle of the flower is in focus, but the outer parts of it, because of the wide aperture, are out of focus, which I'm just going to deal with that fact. Um, I've still got that raised up. There we go. Um, I might just drop my exposure a little bit, actually, just because it's quite bright. Um, yeah, I'm just going to have to deal with the fact that some of it will be out of focus, because if I try and focus stack it, which is taking lots of images of different parts of it and stacking them together so it's all in focus, um, the, the, the images won't match up because it's going to be moving around, so I'm just going to deal with that. Um, but um, um, now, it's, yeah, you, I mean, you can see when I zoom in how much it's moving. So hopefully... Now, because I've dropped that down, I can actually reduce my ISO probably. I'd say 160 might be okay if I get it still, don't move. Yeah, actually that's nice and sharp just on some of those droplets, which is what I want. So yeah, nice image to start. I'll show you that now and then move on 
and that away to try and find some uh, trees. Focus phone. There she goes. Just got very excited as I was walking through because that is the tree just gently appearing in the mist like that. So um, what I need to decide is obviously the closer I get to it, the more clear the tree will be. So I definitely want to be closer than this because that's just a bit too misty and really for my taste. Um, but hopefully there's other subjects. I think there's a tree on that side as well, which you can see on the camera, but not with much eyes, <laughs> which probably isn't surprising. So um, yeah, there should be a good opportunity. Um, as my news feed pops up with more Downing Street party updates. Those guys showing sure how to live. Um, so yes, I'll get a little bit closer to it so it's clearer and we'll get a nice simple composition that I think is gonna work. I can tell already, I just need to work out the best perspective from the tree, but I already quite like it from here because the right and left side of the branches sort of mirror each other, but I'll show you that when we get a little bit closer. It's always so great when you have a shot in mind and you come to somewhere um, and you really get it. Um, I mean, it's basically a black and white image anyway, this. Um, it's the tree isolated, but I have got, well, I didn't expect to do this, more of the heather in the foreground, um, which is just got a really nice frosty look to it. Um, so it's great. I've moved closer than actually I um, I'd initially thought I would because it was looking a bit too misty. So yeah, it looks great. The tree's dead centre. It's moody. I'm never quite sure about these shots. I like taking them. I like editing them and they look really nice. But I never think about it being a print. I'm not sure anybody would want it on their wall. It's very minimal. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with that. So that shot's in the bag. Um, I might take another one where I don't have quite as much foreground um, but the tree that I could vaguely see in the distance earlier with the camera but not my eyes I can now see and I actually think it's better than this one it's got a, it's got a really nice sort of twist to it um, so I'll probably take an identical pretty much composition bit of heather in the foreground isolated background um, but because this one's not as bold a shape, it's more fanning out. I think it, we can get away with being further away, so it's more misty. It's a bit closer than I am now, but um, yeah. So, don't suss that one out. What a great place to be. fun um, it's lovely to be out here I'm literally gonna say that every blog <laughs> I make um, but anyway I'm gonna show you the other shot in a minute but just a moment of just tree appreciation I mean how great is this tree and just come back so you can see it behind me there absolutely beautiful. it's really small um, but the the way the branches play on the bottom is just beautiful and if you get them um, nice and close let me show you on the camera crazy things happening with frost and cobwebs and these sort of strings of web or yeah festooned across the branches there's a nice verb for you um but it's such a cool looking tree i'm assuming it's quite well known i don't know it's it's so unusual i feel like it must be so yeah whether i want a shot closer that i could get with some more color of the branches i don't know um it's not the shot i had in mind but I mean, if I just pan this way, so but when I shot this, the vlog that was here previously, it was way over. And most people wouldn't have seen it. And you got about 70 views. It was pretty rubbish, but it was over the other side of that valley. Um, and there's lovely trees. And I'm sure if I head down that way, 
there'll be all sorts and there's some light coming through now but this is the focus of the next shot this beauty going for a very very mystical look um, on this composition as you can see you can almost the, the tree is almost disappearing into the mist certainly around the edges so um, I will shoot some different versions I will get closer um, and get one where it's more um, distinguished from the background but I just love the feathered mystical effect at the back it does mean that the, maybe the front is just distracting it a little bit more so I could possibly do with zooming in a fraction more but I do want some of the misty um, foreground but yeah I'll have to deal with that and then also the only other thing that I'm slightly picky about is the fact that there's there's like a horizon line and then there's another line behind that behind the tree um, so I might try coming round um, over to this side of the tree um, because obviously over this side there's less of that and there's there's more of a it sort of drops off into the valley so um, but yeah I'll take that shot now and if I've taken some other variations I'll show you those as well but hopefully you enjoy that nice mystical uh, tree image. Right, I've just reached a new low of recording a whole thing to the camera and I just hadn't pressed record on my phone. So, no excuse for that one at all apart from myself. Um, I've moved round, as I said I was going to on the composition. Um, I'm a little bit closer. It's uh, a silver birch tree, of course it is Ben. Um, but I just always end up taking pictures of them because I love the texture of the trunk um, and the bark and I love, as I keep saying, the feathered branches around the outside which are giving this one a really mystical look. Um, so where I've moved, like I'd said before, there's more of a drop off behind the tree, which makes it a much more minimal image. Um, it's basically just the horizon line, the tree, and then just the white mist behind it, which looks great. I really like this one. I think I prefer it to the last image. And I think it's my favorite one so far. Um, there might just be the hint of silhouette of the trees behind, which I quite like if they're there. Adds a little bit of depth to the image. Um, if they're not there though, it makes it nice and minimal. So either way is a win. Um, but yeah, and I was saying before, I think the cold is gonna defeat me. Um, I'm going to try and find some more images before I bring this one to a close, but it's really, really cold. So, yeah. But this mist is here to stay, so like I said, it's like a playground. So many things you could take pictures of that will look great. So I'm going to move towards the trees down in the valley a little bit more and see if I can get some images there. Um, but I'll show you that one now and let me know what you think. Let me know if you think that one's better or um, how it compares to the others so far. So. Whoa. Right, fingers are getting really chilly now, but I'm so excited because I found something even better than I thought anything I'd be taking a picture of today. Um, so I've wandered down behind that um, silver birch tree, down the slope, I'm on quite a steep slope, going down towards the valley. Um, she there's a river running down um, the bottom there, but um, just found this amazing characterful um, moss covered tree it's straight out of Lord of the Rings it's uh, and I, I've been waiting to shoot something like this for so long um, watching the videos of people like Nigel Dance and Simon Baxter um, I'm not suggesting this picture and it will not be anything like the pictures they take but it's the first chance I've had to see a tree like this in the conditions like this <sighs> absolute winner so it's this one behind me here if I can just turn around without falling down the slope there like I say straight out of Fangorn Forest um, lovely bluey kind of mist um, but there's enough light coming that it's really catching and really lighting up the moss on the branches so what I've struggled with in the composition is that there's a tree to the left that's smaller with similar character I'm happy for that to be in but then there's one on the right which is a silver birch I think that's white um, so I've just sort of played around with composition between portrait and landscape but I've gone for a portrait composition with the main tree dead centre and those two left and right and because it's on a slope there's a diagonal 
um, which is slightly annoying, but it has got the orange of the dead bracken in the foreground, so there's lots of cool elements, and the mist is separating this tree from what would usually be a very busy background behind it. So I'm going to take that shot, um, and I also am probably going to take a more intimate composition going in closer on just the mid-range branches of the two moss-covered trees, but so excited, so glad I came out. And that's got to be a winning photograph there. So, yeah, I think that will probably be the end of the vlog. Um, really happy with the shots um, and really happy with the conditions. I'll show you those shots in a minute, but thank you very much for tuning in again. Um, if you are watching for the first time, welcome. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed it. And please subscribe so you can, um, hopefully weekly, uh, I'm making videos, more of this kind of stuff. Um, Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.